what is going on guys red here and today we are going to look at the first iteration of multi-classing in dark and darker currently on the test server if you've bought the founders edition you will get access to the training system also known as multi-classing once you reach level 35 on a class you become a class master and are also given a reward token these tokens are given every five or ten levels as it varies for now you can then claim a random perk skill or spell at random from another class that is above level 35 and can do this with every reward token from any class you choose. In this example, I have picked the spell Bless from Cleric, and now I can use it on my wizard. Really cool. In this video, I will be showcasing my wizard cleric multi-class build. I picked these two classes because they synergize off each other extremely well. I happened to roll two times and was lucky enough to get Smite and the perk Perseverance. Smite applies extra damage when swinging a weapon, and Perseverance reduces damage from all sources by three, which makes you very tanky. My dream perk was Divine Protection, 50% damage reduction for 8 seconds. This would make the Bonk Wizard build virtually unkillable to any physical damage class, but honestly, Smite was even better than I imagined. So I'm going to hop into a Goblin Caves High Roller and show you guys how the build performs. I'm also going to show the gear here and the damage. Funnily enough, if you throw a torch, it actually activates off Ignite and Smite. This purple staff is hitting for 134 damage plus a 13 burn, totaling 147 damage. This build is currently running true magic damage, which doesn't have a headshot multiplier, but we're hitting nine true damage guaranteed four times per swing. And if we had a better staff and more optimized gear, this would be hitting over 200s easily. And finally, we load into the goblin caves here. Now, the test server didn't have many players on it. And since it does have gear based matchmaking, all these lobbies were empty except for this one. So this is the only PvP lobby that I got because my gear, I guess, is higher than the average player at this point. And that's okay. We got some good action in this one. Now notice that the Goblin Caves is actually in a 3x3 layout again. Uh, I don't know if this is like this in the main server because I haven't played it much. But uh, let me know. But yeah, we pop Smite here easily take out the goblin you're gonna see the potential of the damage here for pve it is insane but yeah that perseverance perk where you take three less damage actually works on goblin poison so you don't take like any damage at all from it it is great just kind of cruising here i'm trying to make my way to the middle of the map which you find very very fast now since the goblin caves is only a three by three and this means there's only one boss in the middle as well and this is where most people come to find pvp super fast and you'll have to remember that most of the people in this game are like super geared like i am because of the gear based matchmaking I didn't even know this at the time. I finally spot someone across the room and I'm ready to get active here. Now you'll notice I go invis, but that mage is on me still. The ranger with the longbow. I just got hit by the mage. I'm slowed. Ranger goes into spear mode, activate the smite. Literally one hit him. I invis to de everything. Because I got to reset my health. Now, if I didn't have the perk Perseverance there, I was dead. Because every instance of damage I took was reduced by three. And we took a lot of hits from different things there. That was honestly played super poorly. I literally just did the Oonga Boonga W key. And we almost died, but somehow we lived. Now, as this mage is on me as I'm campfiring through the wall, I do hear another set of footsteps. We actually don't even get full health from a blue campfire because we're running 130 HP on this build. Which is what you want to be doing. You want to be maxing health, physical damage reduction, and just be as tanky as possible. The thing I love about Smite too is its cooldown. It's very, very small. And also, you can just activate it instantly. With Ignite... You have to do the whole cast and everything. 
But with Smite, it's just an instant activation and they never expect it. See this Barbarian? It's actually Plate Barbarian, by the way. Dodging these frannies like a pro here, doing a little back step. Activate the Smite, and I mean, good block on his part there, but... Like, I mean, he just, he just goes down. And these were actually the only two people in the Goblin Caves this run. Like I said, it's the test server. There's gear-based matchmaking, so there's not a lot of players. But these guys were very geared for the test server. He actually has the Ranger's loot in his inventory, and just look at these pieces. Legendary Ring of Survival with true damage. Necklace of Peace, purple. Ring of Courage. This Ring of Courage is crazy. I actually replaced my Ring of Resolve with this. It has armor, health, buff duration, and strength. Perfect for my build. And yeah, this guy was in blues, purples. Full plate barbarian. We counter this guy so hard, it's not even funny. Just because we're doing so much magic damage there. Drink that luck pot. And of course we have to go check the ranger's body. I don't even actually know where the boss is at this point in time because it's the 3x3 layout. And this is the point where I realize, wait, the map's not as big as it should be. I'm trying to go down to the troll here. And I'm like, wait, this is the corner of the map. I thought there was supposed to be a troll right here. Nope. So I make my way back and uh, the new boss area is actually right by the two centipedes at these elevators. Now, unfortunately for me, the boss was the Cyclops, which I don't have a lot of experience with, but I know how to kill. And you'll notice how little time the game gives you in the 3x3 Goblin Caves. I mean, we're already almost 60% into the game, so... Here with Smite and Ignite, I just assume I can kill it super fast. Anyway, long story short, I don't end up killing the Cyclops because the circle is really bad, time is low, and I do end up goofing up and taking a couple of hits and I'm just like it's not worth risking the set so I decide to go extract here's a bit of a closer look at some of the pieces that we got from the ranger and barbarian not bad that cloak is crazy but yeah after this I just stash sell everything and decide to queue up another game because I really just want to get the most I can out of this multi-classing build before the test server goes away and unfortunately, those were the only two guys queuing at the time, I guess, in Goblin Caves that had that amount of gear, which means that we unfortunately didn't see anyone in the next game because of the gear-based matchmaking. So because the lobby was empty, I decided to give myself the goal of just going and getting revenge on the Cyclops to really see how fast this build could kill it. Because usually Wizard is not good at doing Cyclops. It's really just a damage check when you're doing the boulder phase. So I wanted to see if we could actually just completely decimate it with this damage i'm gonna uh, fast forward to the boss fight but i wanted to just leave this in look at the damage i'm taking by the way perseverance is just an insane perk like if i didn't have it there i might be like 20 percent health if not less just because that poison damage would be ticking me oh yeah by the way we just one hit that goblin archer with smite ignite i thought that was pretty funny anyway fast forwarding to the cyclops now, one thing I wanted to add was that the game time in this new Goblin Caves 3x3 variation gives you literally zero time to boss. At least if you're a wizard or a warlock, looting the pile after the boss is like virtually impossible. Here you're going to see that I'm basically rushing to the boss room. And even after I kill the Cyclops and go to the pile, time gets pretty sketchy. Yeah, I just decided to tank the hit there because there's no one in this game. And we have a bunch of meds. But yeah, time to decimate the Cyclops. And I guess I'll give you guys a small little rundown of how this fight goes. So you just hit up the Ignite. With Spell Overload, you get so many too. You basically just circle right and jump every attack. And while doing this, try to hit its head. It's really all you do. For this attack, you hug his right leg and circle him. So you don't get snared. And it'll never hit you. Just keep jump crouching those uh, swipes. And every time I have smite, I usually try to save smite for the boulder phase. Right here. Because this is where you need to do the most damage possible. 
And you just jump after he smacks the ground. And we already got him out of the phase, which means we need a ton of damage. After the boulder phase, he'll do a stomp, and you just want to move away from him. And that's the whole fight. Actually, this attack is jump, jump, crouch. That's every mechanic, I think. Pretty much all you need to know. Here he's going to do the snare attack with his eyeball. Hug the right leg. And that's, that's it. It's just a loop of this, pretty much. Saving my smite for when he does the boulder attack. Which is right now, because you can tell he stops. And getting hit by the boulders still seems a little random. But... With that Perseverance perk, we take even less damage. Stomp, run away. But yeah, you guys have pretty much seen the whole fight. I'm just going to speed it up until we kill this guy. Super, super fast with the Smite Ignite Multiclass build. There goes the Cyclops. And notice how the game is pretty much halfway done. So we have to loot the pile five times on Wizard which is very slow, but I do get it done here. Got to hit the loot pile for the dopamine. Also just want to showcase what the loot pile room looks like without the five by five map. I think you guys have all seen this. This is pretty much the old one. It does still have the chest and you can't actually open the monumental chest without a lock pick. I'm pretty sure that's how it is in the game now, if I'm not wrong. And this chest, believe it or not, I believe in the most recent update, can actually drop any item that you can obtain from the pile. And after all that, the time we have left on the map is pretty low, but there are a bunch of extracts still, so we decide to hit the main one here in the middle and get ourselves out. But yeah, that's pretty much going to conclude my multi-classing wizard cleric build idea video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Luckily, we got the perks we needed. Unfortunately, it is a bit of a grind still on the test server. I wish they really just gave us max level and we could just do whatever we wanted, but... I guess they wanted to give us that feeling of progressing and unlocking the perks. Hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys want to see more multi-classing, I might do it on the test server. It's a lot of fun. It's very imbalanced, but it's a lot of fun. Until next time, take it easy, guys, and peace out.